This is Mr. Ranger here. I'm going to be working on the Algebra 2 midterm review for the 2019 midterm. And these are the SAT questions. So this is page one of the midterm review for 2019 SAT questions. So number one, which of the following is equivalent to two times in parentheses x squared minus x, close parentheses, plus three times in parentheses x squared minus x. Now, what I've noticed as students have started to do these is that most students are going ahead and distributing the numbers that are in front. So they're writing 2x squared minus 2x plus 3x squared minus 3x. And if you combine like terms, you get 5x squared minus 5x. Totally fine. So the answer is A. Now, the way I view this, and the reason, one of the reasons I chose this problem to be on the review is because if you first look at the problem, you can see that they actually share a common factor of x squared minus x. So if you're thinking that this is really a part of factoring like we did with some of our quadratics, you could actually just write 2 plus 3 as its own factor and x squared minus x and just be one of them because they share it. 2 plus 3 is 5, and if you were to distribute that 5 times x squared minus x, you'd get the same answer, 5x squared minus 5x. All right, so I think most students will end up doing this way, which really does not take that long, but I wanted to show you one of the reasons I did this was because this will help your brain think about uh, when you factor quadratics with an A value that's uh, not 1. All right, number two. Now, number two gives you the graph of this function, which is a parabola, so we know it's a quadratic, and it says which of the following is the function f. So when I look at these answers, I see a, b, c, and d are all in vertex form. Okay, well, if they're all in vertex form, let's go ahead and first look at the graph to find the vertex. And the vertex is 3, 1. Okay, now when they're in vertex form, you must think opposite for your x value of your vertex. So when I look inside the parentheses in these answer choices, I'm actually looking for x minus 3, all of that squared. So I'm going to eliminate b and d because those do not say x minus 3 squared in the parentheses. Okay, now in terms of differentiating between a and c, you have one of them has an a value of 4 and the other has an a value of 1. So I think I mentioned this in all my classes at some point, but if I were to go to the vertex and go over one unit to the right, okay, so I've gone over one unit to the right, and what is 1 squared? 1 squared is 1, so if a was 1, then the next point should be right here or 4, 2, all right? If A was 1, it would be going like that. But since A, since the point is not there, it's actually gone up not 1, but 1, 2, 3, 4 units to get to 4, 5. That means A must be 4. So that's why the answer is A. All right, if you're having problems with that, you can always take one of these points all right, so if you have x minus 3 squared plus 1, if you think the answer is c, you can actually plug in an x value. So you could plug in the vertex. Um, you could plug in the 4, 5, and you could see if that actually makes the function true. Okay, so again, um, I would do that. You could plug in one of these points, 4, 5, or 2, 5, to see if it's true. But hopefully, you understand the idea of moving one unit from the vertex and then squaring that number and moving up the A value. Okay, number three. Number three says if 2n divided by 5 is 10, what is the value of 2n minus 1? Well, let's just go ahead and solve this equation. It's being divided by 5, so if you multiply both sides by 5, it will get rid of that division to give you 2n is 50. All right, so then if you divide both sides by 2, you get n is 25. Now, it's not asking for the value for n. It's asking for the value of 2n minus 1. So you're going to go ahead and plug in 25 for n into that expression to give you 50 minus 1, which is 49, or b. All right. Okay, so that one's good. Number four. 
Number four is an interesting question. I chose this because it kind of looks similar to number three, but it's a little bit more complicated because it doesn't give you an equation with just one variable. It's got multiple. So I actually chose this because you want to view this as a system. So I'm going to write them on top of each other. So I'm going to write them vertically. All right, those first two equations. And I can go ahead and solve this with either substitution or elimination. It doesn't say which one to choose, like uh, some questions that I've asked you have. So you have the choice. Personally, I think the easiest way for me to do this is to do elimination. And I'm going to multiply the first equation by negative 2. By doing that, I'm going to have negative 4w minus 8t equals negative 28. And if I rewrite the second equation and use addition, I will eliminate the variable w. Okay, and that's the whole goal here is to eliminate uh, one of these variables to solve for the other. So if I add, I get negative 3t equals negative 3, so t is equal to 1. Again, you're not finding out what t is equal to. That's not what the question asks. Now I need to plug back into one of the originals. I'm just going to use the first one. 2w plus 4t is 14, and plug in 1 for t, and solve for w. So I'm going to get 2w plus 4 is 14. Move that 4 over with subtraction to get 2w is 10, and w is 5. So if I know that w is 5 and t is 1, when I plug it into 2w plus 3t, I'll get 2 times 5 plus 3 times 1. All right, and 10 plus 3 is 13. So that was a very uh, long process in terms of finding the answer here with writing as a system, solving for one of your variables, then using that to plug into an original equation to find the other variable, and then ultimately plug it into that expression, 2w plus 3t. All right, and the last question on this page says if f of x is equal to 5x squared minus 3 and f of x plus a is equal to 5x squared plus 30x plus 42, what is the value of that a? So it's some number. So the first thing I did was I rewrote the original function f of x. Okay, it's this quadratic. Then it says go ahead and plug in x plus a for x. So watch how this substitution works. Again, if it was a number like f of 2, you're going to replace x with that number. But it's not a number. It's an expression that I replace x with, x plus a. All right. Now, to do x plus a squared, you're really going to multiply x plus a times x plus a, which is x squared plus 2ax plus a squared. And all of that still needs to be multiplied by 5 and then subtracting 3 at the end. Okay? So I'm going to distribute that 5 and get 5x squared plus 10ax plus 5a squared minus 3. Now, this technically should be equal to this original in the problem of x plus a. So those should be the same. And when I look at that, I notice that the number in front of x is 30. All right, so that's my letter B, if you're thinking in standard form. And if I go down here to my uh, other box one, 10a is in front of the x. All right, so in for these to be true, 10a and 30 must be equal to each other. So to solve that, you divide both sides by 10. So a is equal to 3. So the answer is done. a is 3. But let me show you again why that's true. If you were to plug a into this 5, or into this a over here, and get 5 times 3 squared, 3 squared is 9. 9 times 5 is 45. And positive 45 minus 3 is 42, which you can confirm is your c value in the first part of the problem. All right, so number five, the answer is C. All right, that does it for page one. Tune in for page two coming soon.